Group A. 2022 Hot 6 GSL Season 3. I take the whole city down with this. Takes the whole city down with this. Let's do it. I'm liking these lyrics, man. Spitting bars. That's spitting bars, yo. Uh, guys, we're going to go to the rematch now of Armani versus Bion. And I hope for Armani's sake, uh, he can step it up because Bion smashed him in like the most textbook TVZ fashion we've seen. Yeah, that felt like the most one-sided match of the night by a lot. Oh, I mean, yeah. it wasn't even remotely close. Bion just picked him apart, and it seems like Bion has a really good feel, not only for this matchup, but also his opponent, Armani. I mean, yeah. he is in this guy's head, and the past year, he has won 17 out of the 19 series they played against each other. Damn. And on top of that, I mean, the build order selection by Bion, on the new maps has been spectacular too. I mean, I love like the slow build going up to three TC, three three CC. God, <laughs> too much Age of Empires. Man. I keep saying TC. Going up to three town centers yeah. and then pushing with his pushing with his spearman. He's gonna mine some more stone and then attack him. <laughs> oh, it's so embarrassing, dude. Oh no. Starcraft two program for six years, casting GSL, calling things town centers. But I mean, beyond he's just he's playing out of his mind and. Man, set one's already ready. We're going to be right. going right into this. Let's go. Final best of three. Who's going to live and who's going to die in GSL Season 3? Guangdong Freaks, Armani. Shopify Rebellion, Bjorn. Some Bjorn support here. Um, yeah, I mean, I want to see how Bjorn's going to uh, try to play this out. Uh, he had very prepped builds. He always and does. He always does. It, it is, you know, an interesting thing when you have a rematch uh, uh, versus a guy that had really prepped builds because it's like, okay, well, do you have two more? Are you going to 4 me? Guarantee or, you he does. You think so? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, like, how many sets these guys play in, like, online tournaments, for example? You got to be able to mix it up in, like, a daily tournament where you play, like, one Zerg, two games, then you play another Zerg later in that tournament. Yeah. And beyond, I feel more so than almost any other Terran. I mean, Maru is also one player that can do this quite often. He's so good at mixing up his strategies that he is dangerous in any best of X series. And I think he's also dangerous in this kind of situation where you play him again, because I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him do a different build every single map of this one, even including the, the matches that we saw earlier in this, uh, earlier today. Now going to reactor first into a command center is Bion. And I mean, just the tactics that he comes out with has been superb. I was watching a little bit of Armani versus Bion from some of the online tournaments before coming in to cast this today. Yeah. And like, this is a guy that can just hit you with absolutely anything. Like, he'll come in with, like, Widow Mine drops with an armory. He'll come in with cloaked banshees. He'll come in with marine pushes. And it's just like, how do you prepare for a guy like that? It's so tough to have a defense prepped for everything. And it's also so hard to get a good read on exactly what build it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, also, I do wonder if Armani is going to try to just, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a jump the shark or not, but just do some kind of super cheese or something weird. I was I, surprised we didn't see that in the previous best of three. Well, you know, here's the thing, though, because like Armani, like we see him play these macro games, but, uh, you know, there's always something a little bit degenerate about cheesing, right? And it's one of these things where like you look like a genius when it works, <laughs> and you look like an idiot when it fails, right? Uh-huh. Um, but some players seem to be prone to cheese because it's the right setup in the build in the series uh, on the map and the matchup versus the player. Whereas there are other players that seem to, and I think Armani's one of these players. I'm not, I don't want to be too harsh on him, but like he'll macro a little bit. And if things don't seem to be working out his way, he starts to cheese in all his games. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, even versus uh, Estrella, it was like, he played a good macro game in game one and almost lost and then won. And then in game two, it's like, he's like, timing attack. Oops, it didn't work. <laughs> all right, Lingdrone all in. And I mean, I 
as, as great as uh, Armani was in that game against Australia, I can't imagine he's confident against Beyond. And so no. I, would, I, I just wouldn't be shocked if we have some kind of a surprises here, some kind of aggro. Beyond is truly one of his uh, biggest nemesis, I think. Nemesis. Nemesai. Nemesai. <laughs> I don't know. Because just like the, the stat line between these two guys, I mean, Armani's a very good Zerk. He should not be losing 17 out of 19 best of X series against anyone, I feel like. I mean, even the best Terran in the player in the world. Right. Like, I would expect him to take possibly more more than two series against Maru. So for me, it almost feels like perhaps he has kind of a mental block against Yun, or maybe that's just a really strong stylistic oh. mismatch. I, I, look, I, I, in my own experience, like a million years ago when I played, uh, you know, competitively, I had that versus some players mm. where it's like, even though I feel like I look at them, this is actually a lot of drone kills, by the way. Yeah, six. It just keeps adding up, too. He's not able to get a good surround. These Hellions. Yeah. Eight drone kills is way more than you bargained for when you decide to come in with a four Hellion run by. I mean, five Queens, a handful of Lings. Should not be losing eight drones right there. And that's a that's really rough here for Armani. And now the Cloak Banshee's coming in. Going to try and find some more damage. And we'll see how... Beyond decides to kind of uh, converge this in with a timing attack because that's usually his bread and butter is to do these yeah. kind of finesse openings and then go for a really strong killing blow. But yeah, that was a that was a rough defense right there. Yeah, I mean Beyond definitely got the job done. Uh, and there's going to be a follow up with Cloak Banshee, so um, we're going to see probably a delay in that actual big timing attack that you were talking about, State. Um, but when it comes, yeah, I'm watching to see if it's going to be fatal. Yeah, we'll have to see. Cloak Banshee trying to find any damage it can, but Armani is well prepared with a... Oh, that's a cheeky spot right there. <laughs> can barely hit the drones mining gas. Um, so... Yeah, he drives him out for a little bit. We've got five Marines coming out at a time. No fourth base, but I don't. I wouldn't say that you need a fourth base to have a target in, in a situation like this. He is going to take that third base now that's in the back of his base, which beyond in most of these games, he's been much more prone to try to, uh, you know, put pressure on. Uh, this time he's not. He's going to macro up. I think we're still going to see that pressure pretty soon, though. Five Marines in production right now. I believe a reactor just finished, so we might see even more. Adding two more barracks, and yeah, this is looking like he's going to be gearing up for a really strong three-base push, perhaps with 1-1. One, one. As Armani now kind of posturing on the map, he really doesn't have a lot of intel on what Byun's game plan is. This is a nice little catch right here on these Hellions. That's one of the um, advantages for Byun and playing a map like this and having a, a third base in the back like that because Armani isn't really sure of the timing. He doesn't know if this is going to be a super fast two base push. He doesn't know if this is going to be kind of more of a three base that, slow that, that's build. That's the problem is that he's got a secret unless you figure out uh, what he's up to. You're really playing and I think honestly from the Zerg's perspective a pretty hard uh, spot. Mm. And I do think some of these maps were made uh, to try to generate new issues for the Zergs. Perhaps. And I think we're seeing that here because uh, for a while, we had sort of the same kind of pattern of maps. They did seem to lend it to, you know, these long, big macro games where Zerks could get out of control. Uh, he's on the move right now. He's headed out here. And I, I think that Armani may end up just ditching this base. I think he has to. He has a lot of meters in production, and those aren't Ling Bane, which is really what he needs to kind of stop his attack. Actually, he already has Bane Ling speed, so maybe if he's able to make something happen on Creep, but man, that's not a lot of Banes. I don't want to... I, if I'm Armani, I do not want to take that engagement against Bion of all people. Well, I love the Marines in the back, too, covering the tank. Like, it, it can be very easy for Zerk to, to not get the big picture here mm. and just come in. He needs to keep putting pressure on that hatchery, though, where Zerk doesn't have to come out and try to fight him yet. Armani might try to defend this, and yeah, here we go. Yuna's coming in on that siege tank. Armani has, has to disengage, but he, he kind of lollygags right there in front of the hatchery, and that's going to be a lot of banlings going down to splash damage. Yeah, it's like he pulled away, stopped, got shot with siege tanks, and then got fished back in. Yeah, and I now don't know. He, I think this is going to be another one of these, like, just kills here. I think so, too. That was a really big misstep. I mean, losing that group of banlings right there is critical. It's weird. It's like the second time it seems like he didn't control right. Yeah, this happened in the, the previous series as well. Yun now with five Marines is going to clear out this creep and begin a, to continue the slow push down into the remaining three bases of Armani. And Armani, I like this, trying to catch the reinforcements here for Byun. 
This is one of the few things he has going for him is the mobility oh, of these. He's been so patient, though, mm. that, you know, he's, and, and look at this, man. If he gets the Banelings Nest. Oh, my God. You're just, right like, there actually not, natural. yeah, I mean, you're just not going to have uh, any other way to fight this, and then it's going to oh. be what you see is what you get. Yeah, this, this might just be the end of it right now. Well, he may have enough Banes to take this out. Well, I apparently not. I was wrong. Pyun with his Marine Control, he's one of the best in the business, especially when yeah. it comes to the splitting. I mean, it's like him and Maru. <laughs> I don't know who else does it as well as they do. Yeah, this is brutal, man. Armani just getting absolutely run over right now. And <sighs> even if he had defended that fourth base properly or even just sacked it, I'm not sure if he had the oomph in his production to really be able to stop this push. I mean, this is just so much production coming out from Yun. Even... Yeah, I mean, this is over. He's yeah, in the he's... pool. Yeah, this one's done, though. Yeah. Some very low Marines, though. <laughs> Yeah, some Marines that aren't uh, doing great on HP, but there's more to replace them up here is we're going to have another base go down. I don't think he killed the Spawny Pool, by the way, but I don't know how much it matters either. Yeah, I mean, even if Armani is somehow able to stabilize, Yun's just going to push in one or two more minutes, and uh, even these Marines are just going to be GG. enough. That's All right. it. Yun does it again. Nothing is changing in these games. Uh, it's like we're in uh, Groundhog's Day or something for these games. It's the same tear and push every game. Armani die in the same way. That's Bion's bread and butter, man. He loves these uh, nice kind of finesse openings, catch some drones, slow down the economy of the Zerg, and then come in with a really big timing push. And he doesn't really incorporate a lot of Woodamine play. He doesn't really focus too much on the siege tanks. Usually it's just one or two. It's just a ton of upgraded Marines. And he's one of the best in the world at splitting them. And you saw right there, Armani could not get any good connections there with his Banelings. And right now it seems like this puzzle is something that he might not be able to solve. So we're getting ready for set two on day to see Armani. Look at Armani right now. It's uh, like, he's like, what do I do, man? I can't even get into late game here. Every time it's Marines, tanks, and medevacs come, and then Armani doesn't have enough. He's got to come up with something, or this is going to be the last game, and Armani's going to be out as Bjorn would move on into the round of 10. I can do this all day. Guangdong Freaks, Armani. Shopify Rebellion, Bjorn. Okay, um, I really want to have a different game, man. I really do. I, I don't want to see another, uh, you know, medic marine, or uh, sorry, medevac marine push that comes out here and uh, slaughters this four base Zerg. I think we're going to see the push. What I'm wondering is um, whether our money is going to be able to defend it. Because a lot of the times that these pushes are happening, Bian is getting some kind of advantage ahead of time, you know? Yeah. For example, in that game, keep in mind, he picked off eight drones very early on the natural expansion of, of Armani, and that was like minutes that those drones weren't mining. It was so bad. I mean, he could have had so many more lings if that yeah. wasn't the case, and perhaps he's able to defend at the third base, the fourth base, excuse me, but... But, but every <sighs> jab that, uh, you know, Bjorn comes in with does end up decking Armani. Yeah. And putting him in a bad spot, which only makes the, you know, the second or third setup attack here really strong. I mean, if Armani's going to survive this, he needs to, like, judo flip some of these attacks, like pin all the Hellions and kill all them and not lose the drones. Now, that's easier said than done. That's oh, yeah. a lot less of an idea and more about control. But um, otherwise, I just feel like Bion is going to skate further ahead. And, you know, it, I do want to point out most TVZs we see don't end like this in GSL. That's right. In, in fact, very rarely do we have one where we go, well, that was just a great mid-game tear and he killed him. <laughs> it's funny to see it happen over and over again. And I don't even feel like Armani dies that often to other top-tier Terrans this way. Bjorn just has his number. And I yeah. feel like if Armani is going to come back in this series, he's going to have to completely tighten up his early game defense. I mean, he cannot, he has to be impenetrable, basically, until that first push comes in with Marines in the tanks. Yeah. Because if he continues to take 
any damage. He he needs every single piece of the puzzle oh. to go right for him until this happens. Some and... ro Roach Warren here. Okay. On three huh. hatch. I like that he's mixing it up. I'm not sure exactly what the play is going to be here for Roaches. Is this to stop? Well, let's see. Hmm. Let's give it a little bit of time here. But it, it seems like <coughs> this is where you could get, like, two pro gamers to do, like, a huge deep dive into, like, what each build is, yeah. is exactly and what's happening. Because it seems like what uh, what Armani's doing is he's used to playing against Terrans who don't overcommit with production and kind of flow out a third base safely and, and you know, uh, focus on double eBay. Okay. Uh, and, and invest into late game. Whereas I think what's happening, so that Armani seems to not die in those games. I think Beyond basically powers up way harder on two bases. And the way to stop that is you have to power up and match him on your three bases as Zerg or four bases as Zerg. And he's not, and he hasn't done that. And so basically the push just wins every time. He's in all in him. Yeah, you're right. For a second, I was thinking this might be some kind of a way of solving the puzzle in the early game to defend, but instead Armani, I mean, you said it before that sometimes he falls into this trap where when things aren't working, he just busts out the cheese and... Yeah, he just starts to rush. And, and I think I think it's predictable. Um, and I know I ha I've said that in more than just, you know, the series here against Beyond, if you go mm -hmm. back to my older cast too, where I just, I've seen this a lot of times, like, he's like, I don't like these late games. And I, a part of me almost feels like just cheese Ooh. early in the first game and then try macro in the second game, but... I don't know if this is going to work. This is really dangerous here for Armani. Yeah, does spot it now. Stim is about 10, 15 seconds away. And once Stim is done, if the SCVs are able to meet shield for these Marines, he will be able to DPS this down. He just can't let the Ravagers connect. Armani continuing to push up now. Yeah, I'm just kind of content to concede this position until he yeah. has his medevacs but, out see, and he, he handled it very well. He's just stayed patient. Yeah. Keep and in mind, this stuff can't really run, uh, run away against the Marines. That's right. And Armani kind of knows it. I mean, he built some more drones behind it because he knows he lost a lot of tempo, but it's only a couple of drones before the, the Zerglings start. So <laughs> we'll see if he's actually going to transition off of this. But as it is, I feel like, hmm, maybe the pressure accomplished what it was aiming to do. <laughs> All right. Sorry, coming in now. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I've been there, man. COVID is. Uh, COVID was rough on me, man. I've it's still got brutal. This, this awful cough. Yeah, nice double drop coming in here from Bjorn and Armani. He doesn't have enough links to deal with this right now. He's actually bleeding drones. And these links just kind of filing in single file, not really getting in, any damage done on these Marines. Most just of them are going to be able to pull up out and away. And then as it is right now, the workout almost equalizing right now. I mean, 40 to 48, not bad for Terran when you do have mules. And the, the problem is that when you go for this Roach Ravager, you get abused by medevacs. Right. It's, it's not like you have that mute attack that he had in the other games. Mm -hmm. It's also like the same kind of trap that a lot of Protoss players would fall into if they go charge lots instead of Blink Stalkers. It's the same thing where like you just get punished on mobility, especially when you have bases set up like this, where you see if you're going to go as the Zerg from the third base into the main base, you have to go all the way around into the natural to reach that spot. So there's two really kind of distant pressure points you have to deal with, and that's why Armani had to make so many links to try and uh, manage this defense. And beyond behind it, continuing to add siege tanks, going up two engineering bays and a third CC. And I kind of do like that pressure that we saw from Armani. For a moment, I thought it might be him just going for an all-in, but actually, the pressure kind of accomplished what he aimed for it to do. He got a couple of supply depots. He forced a lift on the command center. He slowed beyond down a little bit. The question for me is whether that the tempo that he's losing in terms of his tech, as you said, he's not getting the mutilists out quite yet. He's only just now getting Glio reconstitution, the roach speed upgrade. Is Beyond going to be able to eke out too much damage before Armani is able to start firing on all cylinders? I mean, that's the big question, right? Um... I do think that Armani's going to have enough to, to probably take a fight here, unless Bion can tactically set up a position to punish. And it looks like he's trying to do that. I don't think he has enough at the front hmm. to push in is the problem. He needs to have, like, a heavy amount on one side or the other. He's going to try to come into here. He could probably kill off some links, but not much more than that. I feel like this is more about map control now. I mean, yeah. you see the, the, the creep getting all the way pushed back to the remaining three bases of the Zerg player. And this is something that Bion has done consistently against Armani throughout the day, where he just controls the creep spread on the map, and he establishes kind of a foothold to set up a tank push later. And 
We'll see. Able to come in there. I think almost picking off one drone. Saved by the hacker. Saved by the uh, extractor right there. The hacker man. The hacker. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, this is probably the best game from Armani. Yeah. Between these two that we've uh, had so far. Absolutely. He is going to get a deny there. Bjorn gets that. That's not the end of the world, though. No. That's like the, the least bad way to lose the hatch is to have it canceled immediately when it starts. Right. And Armani, I mean, he's, he's only sitting on like 70 drones right now. So it's not as though he's really searching for too much more satur saturation. He will retake that fourth base now as he pushes Yun back. Yun is getting the main base, kind of getting confirmation here on the tech. And Armani throwing down an infestation pit is interesting to me. I wonder if we're going to be seeing a hive straight away. There's no way this is for infestors, right? Um, I don't huh. think it's for investors yet. I mean, we'll see. There's a lot of different branches you can have here when you get this late into the game here. Um, he does it's need hive. To, okay. He, he needs to tech away from, um, it's going to be, yeah, lurkers, I think, here. It's It's got to be uh, a, a tech that gets him out of this roach ravager that he's kind of been stuck on. Mm. This doesn't pay off in a, in a long, long game like this. Uh, especially if he get ca gets caught out on the map. It's a little concerning because the creep spread for Armani is not great right now, just starting to push into the middle. And, and this ground army for Armani, this straight up fight, it does really well against just Marines. I mean, Bjorn is not really doing these pressure plays to kind of get a lot of damage. Oh no, the tanks might get caught here. Oh, that's some nice micro there by Bjorn, really reducing yeah. the surface area, but he will lose two tanks. That's kind of stunning, man. I mean, you wanted those five tanks for the big push. That was kind of... Oh, you know, Armani. Oh, he's going to come in here. And let me tell you something, man. If these tanks siege up. Yeah. And, oh, he could, he, you know, he, if he does do it and they get the bile to come down on him, he's going to kill him off immediately. Yeah, losing those two tanks is really um, putting the pressure on Bjorn to try and come manage this defense right now. Armani will pull back. Not confident enough to take that fight completely. As we see Bjorn doing some drop grass over here on the fourth base of Armani. And it looks like it will be Lurkers eventually coming out right now as that Hive is just finishing. Actually, Vipers. Yeah, Viper and a Lurker Den. And right now, I mean, I feel like Armani has kind of been in control of the game from that Roach push. There was a brief moment where Bjorn was getting some damage done with his Medivacs, but once that window closed, it feels like Armani's been pretty much spotless in terms of his defense. Yeah, I mean, Armani's kind of gotten to where he needs to be. This is one of the things that I've always noticed with him is like, I don't think his late game's actually that bad. I think in between mid game and late game, he struggles. Mm. Um, but if he can get to where he needs to be, I think he's a solid Zerg that can do a lot. Yeah, this drop getting a little bit of damage done. Some lost mining time, but I'm Armani. I'm taking that for a medevac and some Marines. And yeah, this drop also just going to get stopped here in the main base. And Armani, man, he doesn't have a lot of anti air, but he is really leveraging. These Zerglings, Roaches, and Ravagers to stop this. Bjorn is trying to find any hole he can, and he actually might be able to get one. The six o'clock place is in danger. Will he try to force it down? Instead, just going for the drones and a pickup here. 11 drones now going down as Bjorn does take a worker lead. You know, this is one of the harder things to do as a Zerg, is to try to put out all these fires uh, as the medevacs kind of swoop through and hit all these different locations. Mm -hmm. But he's doing it, man. Especially with the composition that he has. Yeah. It's not, it's not the easiest one to deal with, with medevacs. Big Roach Ravager oh. Bruiser comp. Oh, big drop over here. Oh, this is starting to fall apart a little oh, bit man. here for Armani. Well, That's a I, lot of I damage. I spoke a second too soon because he was crushing until he wasn't at all. Now there's 18 drones down. That's often the way it goes. I mean, you're kind of limited in your options right there as Armani in terms of how you're dealing with this. Like with no Mutalisks to kind of come in and finally clean up those medevacs. Unless you're perfect time and time and time again, it just takes one or two things for yeah. the dominoes to start falling and you lose maybe 10, 20 drones, potentially even a hatchery. Yeah, enemy. and you're just not competitive anymore. And now a hatchery is mm. going to be killed. Not canceled, but killed. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, even though the, the supplies look very scary, as Zerg has a lot, it's mostly uh, Ravagers, man, and yeah. Roaches. Which, roaches which, and Ravagers. Yeah, they cost more supply, so it looks like the army's bigger than it is. And Bian is going into Ghosts, which are going to be a fantastic unit, I mean. Yeah, the ultimate end game unit in any TVZ is the ghost. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, being able to snipe uh, all these important units like lurkers and Zerg is going to come in here for a fight. I don't think we've got a shot of what Terran has exactly. 
He does have some ghosts. Some nice pickoffs here on the Vipers right now. It's actually... Yana's doing a good job of cleaning this up. Some more snipes coming in from the high ground, and now all the Rojas and Ravagers reinforcing here for Armani as Vienna's going to have to vacate this position. There are more siege tanks up here to the north. Will he be able to stem the tide, though, as Armani has a lot pushing through? Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to trade out quite a bit. I see a lot of SCVs going down, certainly more than were killed in that drop earlier. Um, and look, I mean, it, it eventually is bended off here, but not at the loss of a an entire position, tanks, and, and all sorts of other infantry here. I think there's a little window of opportunity right now for uh, Armani to try to um, leverage this position, mass up, and, and maybe deliver a win in a little bit. Yeah, I think you want to keep the pressure, try and take down any of the key units you can. You will get all the siege tanks through this, so that's a really nice pickup there, but right now the big story is the ghost count kind of spiraling out of control. I mean, for a moment there, Piano was producing almost nothing but ghosts and marines, and this ghost count, once that energy starts stacking up, it'll be really tough for Armani to take any fights with the composition well, I mean, he's got. Everything's just gonna get sniped, right? Yeah. It's gonna be brutal. Now the CCs weren't destroyed, they were simply lifted off. Um, it, it almost seemed like before uh, Beyond chased him out, like maybe you could have just only made lings and attacked him again. Possibly, but yeah. I mean, the ghost just shred those links too. And with the Marines reinforcing, True. I feel like Armani just didn't have the production up to really overwhelm there. I mean, would have taken a huge force. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know, man. That was a great attack there by Armani, but this composition that Bjorn is building right now, it's looking really powerful. I don't know exactly what pieces you have to put together as Armani to be able to stop it. I mean, maybe you focus a lot more on links as we're seeing from him. But I think the melee attack upgrades, if I'm not mistaken, aren't really great for him right now. That might just be plus one, plus one melee attack coming in. And considering the, yeah, plus one, considering the Terran's already on plus three armor, these links are not going to get much, if anything, done. It's going to be 11 lurkers. I mean, this is definitely uh, Armani's game to lose right now. I feel like Vion is in really bad shape. You think so? I mean, this composition, like, but yeah. Terran has, I mean, Zerg has so much of the map right now. I mean, I don't know. In my experience, when Zerg gets this big, it gets harder um, for the Terran to ever fully wipe them out, especially on these maps where we have, like, this upper left area and the bottom right area. They uh -huh. just keep growing on both sides. We'll see if I'm wrong. I mean, yeah. it's possible. I, I see the point that you're making, but I, I feel like there is a case to be made for Bjorn if he's able to kind of turtle up until he hits max with all these ghosts. But Armani's looking to try and stop that out as going to be forced, fortifying this position with a lot of lurkers. Snipes coming in now. We'll pick off the ones in the front. So many ghosts, man. Armani gearing up for a run by here on the fourth base. Only tanks here to defend. He will be able to pick some of them off, forcing yet another lift. Yeah, I mean, mm. again, big, uh, big win in here. Yeah. Uh, but he does bleed off quite a bit, though. I mean, this is a pretty big punish with the snipes. You are not wrong about that, State. Yeah. That is pretty brutal. I mean, like, there's a case to be made for both players, right? I mean, Armani, his economy right now is fantastic. He's consuming the map. His creep spread is just everywhere. But Beyond seems like he's really tough to break. I mean, like, yeah, these lifts are being forced, but I feel like the game for Armani is kind of to maybe whittle away this composition for Beyond. Don't let him hit that critical mass of ghost siege tanks and marines and try and deny a fifth base coming in through him, similar to what we thought yeah. Estrella should do against Armani earlier yeah. today. If Armani can kind of turn that on its head and deny this command center floating over to the uh, 12 o'clock position, I feel like he's in a good spot. But if that planetary gets up, it could be really dangerous. And actually, it's going to be Ling Bane, the selection here for Armani. And I, I quite like this. I mean, what does Byun have? to deal with such a large group of banelings. I mean, if those were able to connect with the, the ghosts, that's just going to be GG, right? Well, the tank count's been thinned oh, out a, a couple times army. here, too, right? Yeah. He's, he's really got that number down. By the way, the only, uh, I guess there's a couple of the bases that uh, Ar Armani could take, but I'd love to see him just take the top left as well. And I just think this start is, draining these resource nodes. I think this is the composition that you want if you're Armani. I'm loving this. This is going to be so many banelings coming in. Bian will lift off this base at 12 o'clock. And we'll see if Army, Armani, <laughs> Armani, I, Armani. Just can't, I just can't say his name, man. All right, coming in. Armani Schwarzenegger. <laughs> oh, that's so many bailings. Bian's going to have to lift off. They're all coming back to the 
six, uh, the 12 o'clock position right here is, again, the Siege takes and the Ghosts are just being retained constantly. And I mean, I thought that composition there for Armani looked so good, but there's no wow. creep spread. There's no speed. He's not able to get on top of these units. Yun just lift off. Yeah, I mean, this is getting to the point where I think Armani's starting to throw here. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, he He's keeps trying not. to break this position, but how do you break this high count of ghosts with siege tanks in the Terran base? I mean, it, yeah. it's so tough. Well, this is why I think he needs to be more focused on growth and maybe trying to use Nidus's or some other form of punishment positionally than attacking into the army that's set up to defend. I mean, the supplies have swung in the favor of Yun for yeah. the first time pretty much all game. And, um, you know, the, the push keeps coming down. Uh, you know, that being said, I do think there are so many bases here for Armani that it's forgettable if he drops one over here on the center left. But Terran is, you know, starting to really play a pretty nice game of catch up. And honestly, uh, if he can get a couple more tanks and ghosts out and fill that in with, a, you know, whatever else he thinks is the right stuff to fill it in with, uh, I think he has the opportunity to maybe try to push through and crush the Zerg. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Another Ling run by coming in, trying to pick up more key units. Two tanks will go down. Even able to get a third there with a splash. Yeah, I think he got four total before we change that camera shot here. Yeah, that's a nice pick out there for Armani. He needs to keep whittling away at these key units, but man, beyond, like, this is so many ghosts right now, and... Oh is, is there gosh. even... Is there even a way for Armani to kill? He doesn't have detection, not does he? detection here, man. Oh, my God. What am I watching? These ghosts are just decimating he just everything. He just unclosed. He just... We don't normally have ghosts, ghosts, ghosts <laughs> win. Sorry, everybody. We don't really have ghosts win with cloaks. That's what they're called when you start to win with ghost cloak. They get ghosts, man. <laughs> Neither of us can speak. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Falling apart here and potentially the last map of the day. But I mean, this composition for Beyond, like this ghost count is so high. And I think like maybe if Armani had better melee attack upgrades, he would have been able to make something work. But it just, it felt like he just keeps running his head into a wall trying to push into Bjorn, and Bjorn, every single fight, like, yeah, he's lifting his CCs, he's losing SCVs, he's losing some siege tanks, but critically, at every junction, he is retaining his ghost count, and now we gotta be up to close to 20 ghosts, and... Well, we also, the, 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 <sighs> the end game comp is kind of weird, right? It's like Ling, Bane, Hydra. Mm. Like, I think the game plan there was, like, try to get the Banelings to connect with the Ghosts, and if that happens and you're able to wipe them off, you, you, you win the game, yeah, but... Yeah, but he's too good. He's just too good at running away from yeah. this. Yeah, there's, there's nothing left here for Armani. I mean, like, the Mineral Bank is non-existent. He only has gas, and Ghosts counter pretty much anything that costs gas, frankly, from yeah. Zerg. Wow. I mean, what a masterclass in terms of just, like, hunkering down and building up the ideal composition here is beyond. I mean, that's some it's real crazy, Turtle man. Terran. It's kind of reminiscent of like seeing a player like Goody just like build up the ultimate death ball of mech, but this time it's just ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like we never really have an end game quite like this one. Um, and I mean, look, the upper left has been uh, completely demolished. I think now we're, yeah, we see the uh, army parading down here to the bottom right uh, and, and going to try to come in here and wipe out this bottom right quadrant. And I think if, if that happens, I think Armani dies. And honestly, I mean, where are the endgame units we see in this matchup? Where are the Ultralisks? You know, where are the Broodlords? Where are the Infestors? The Infestors out now, but it might be too little too late, man. Actually pulling all of his army back to deal with that drop, and that's going to secure beyond this position over here. He needs Fungals, and he needs Bailey connections to make this work. Oh, he's just not going to oh. get those connections. They just never happen, man. Oh, and, and the these Infestors are here. It's too late. Beyond. Oh. Uh, it was a 2-0 at the start of the evening. It's a 4-0 at the end. Beyond clearly the better player in this matchup. Uh, Armani is going to go out along with Estrella. And Beyond is moving on to the round of 10. And you could feel the energy. You could feel how happy he is. Yeah, Beyond with a great performance here in Group A to start off yeah. Season 3 of the GSL 2022. And Armani, man, that's a heartbreaking loss there. It felt like he was in such good control of the game until he wasn't. He just couldn't break Beyond. He could never destroy the third base, he can never destroy the fourth base, and he can never stop the death ball of ghosts from reaching critical mass. And I mean, he tried all these different compositions and just, oh, that's a painful one, man. But props to Bjorn, like, what a masterclass of TVZ today. Oh yeah, I mean, he really delivered. And kind of a cool way to end it as well, where like, it wasn't just, you know, the one-two punch push. It was actually a pretty insane end game. And 
Very different from the end games we normally see. Yeah. Wow, what a comeback from Byung. Byung defeats Armani, the final man to move on to round 10. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. By winning the final match, you're now going to secure your spot in the round of 10 after two seasons, how do you feel? Well, first of all, I was quite relieved with the group. And as the players say, they say that Astria is really uh, in great form right now. I mean, he's definitely not the player to be in a tier 4 position. I mean, there are like two traps um, in tier 4, and one of them is Estria. I try really hard, I clench my teeth, I try not to lose. I literally bit the bullet. And you know, my performance was good today. Alright, let's talk about the match um, slowly and steadily today. In Data C, it was a hard game. In terms of resources, um, Armani had the upper hand, but with the Ghost, you were able to secure the victory in the game. I mean, you know, I try to see if I have the uh, upper hand or lower hand by looking at the uh, number of army, number of production. And he was so ahead in production, and I thought I was ahead, and I thought I couldn't lose that game. And then, you know, I kept telling myself that I have the upper hand. But you know, things were going very strangely in that game, you know, uh, Armani was just rushing in, just destroying everything. You know, I tried to stall out the game as much as possible. I tried to, you know, stall out the game until 30 minute mark. And these days, I've been practicing the ghost a lot in terms of late game strategies. And I think, you know, all that practice with the ghost uh, really showed in my performance today against him. You know, everybody's saying um, you're the Ghost King. And why did you change your ID to Ghost King? You know, for Ghost King, it's kind of like an embarrassing history for me. Uh, there was a guy called Marin King in my team, former team. You know, he was my teammate before. And I liked him a lot, he was really good at the time. So, you know, I try to kind of like, you know, follow his footsteps. That's why I changed my IGN to um, Ghost King, and that's all. So you defeated Armani twice today. The first match, first match was actually more immaculate performance from you. A oh, very tight game indeed. The second game, it felt it felt like you were pressuring the opponent in the beginning, and then you went for the macro game afterwards. And then you know I heard that you practiced a lot. So how did you make um, your TVZ in preparation beforehand? You know, in the, my group we had two partos. Normally, a person would uh, prepare for the TVT, uh, TV, uh, TVP. I mean, Astria, although he's tier 4, he looks so strong right now, definitely not worthy of the tier 4 position. And a lot of the players actually deemed um, Armani as the last tier in my group. But personally, I played with Armani a lot in the uh, before. He definitely has the class, he definitely has the skills. So that's why I decided to... Um, Practice the TVZ the most, considering Army, consider, considering that Armani is a fearsome opponent. You know, I try to, um, in the first game, I tried to lure him into the mind games against the match against, uh, in the match against Armani. And you know, I think everything was the result of um, a lot of practice. So, Byung-dan, did you practice with him? I practiced with Dark a lot. I think Dark kind of has, has a jinx. He never really uh, practices with other players and custom games. And as players, we get a lot of support from the fans. And you know, we're just like, um, we're just kind of like rooting for each other, uh, rooting for each player. And it's kind of like a camaraderie is formed. 
And I'm really happy that I was able to advance today, although I didn't practice that much with Dart. All right, let's talk about something else. Next, uh, last season, um, you were bogged down in the round of 20, and then people are saying that you became the sacrificial person um, of Sue. So what was, uh, how would you summarize last season? I mean, pretty disappointing in general. But I don't think I'm regretful one, to be honest. I practiced really hard, I tried really hard, and I lost purely in terms of skills. But even the last match against Armani, it kind of felt like the game against Sue last season. It kind of felt like a deja vu. And then I was thinking, uh, is this gonna just gonna like go down in flames again? But after going through today's match, I feel like um, last season, uh, the match against Sue was definitely a good experience for my match against Armani today. I mean, Byung, you really wanted to do an interview, I could tell. All right, so before you go in, you want to say to the fans. All right, so next week, I'm going to go to, I'm go overseas for the TSL 9. I'm really happy to have gained um, the victory today before uh, going to TSL. I mean, I've been practicing really hard these days, uh, but especially uh, this season, I've been practicing uh, harder. And we have Thanksgiving Day coming up. I hope you all have a fantastic Thanksgiving Day. In the Thanksgiving Day, I'm gonna keep practicing. And I'm gonna try to make it to round of 60 season. Wow, nice resolution from you, Bjorn. Once again, congratulations on making it to round 10. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Uh, well, I'll tell you, man, you can see the practice uh, is real. It is really impressive, man. Beyond looking to be in great shape. Let's see how far he can go this season at GSL Code S. Yeah, a lot of really exciting matches here today. Estrella put up a great show. 2-1 versus Hero, the reigning GSL champ. And then, um, unfortunately, a 2-1 loss to Armani as well. And yeah. Hero and Bjorn going to emerge from our group victorious into the round of 10. That's right. And uh, Armani and Estrella knocked out, sadly. Uh, but, of course, GSL is going to continue on. So we hope to see them back, uh, whether that's in Super Tournament or next year in Season 1. Yeah. And this Ooh. Thursday, man, we got an exciting group. Rainer. Look at the, it's the lineup of the Young Bachelors. <laughs> Bunny Raider, Dreamin' DRG, it's gonna be a TVZ Fest, man. That's gonna be very exciting. Yeah, that should be a pretty dramatic long day, man. Uh, and of course, you know, Rainer being here. Dude, I mean, this is the thing I've been waiting for since the pandemic has, you know, toned down here in Korea is like, you know, you get somebody like Rainer, who is one of the very best in the whole world. Could he win a GSL? We're gonna answer that question this season. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, man. I mean, Rainer, he's one of the top two foreigners in the world, in my opinion. Absolutely. I it's, think it's just a fact, to be honest. It is thrilling to have him out here. And, you know, <laughs> Bunny, Dream, and DRG, these are good players, but I think they are all killable for Rainer. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, you know, one thing about Rainer, uh, you know, I don't know him that well, but he does seem to be pretty comfortable and confident. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he's going to be too <laughs> psyched out by uh, being in a GSL. So that'll be exciting. Uh, and that is going to be on Thursday. So yeah. join us for that 6.30 p.m. KST. Uh, and good job today, State. Yeah, it was, it was fun, a, man. a treat to Cassidy. I'm sorry. Anytime I wasn't coughing, my mic was up like this. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm over COVID, but I still yeah. have this cough that just won't go away. It's brutal. It's brutal, man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought the cast went well. I thought it was fun. I think so, too. And uh, State is going to be with us for all of the round of 20. So, You'll be seeing a lot of the two of us. Guys, that's all the time we have. We love you. Stay safe. And we will see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Season 3.